So, tonight, guys, week two of Authentic, all right? Last week, last week what we talked about is we talked about how authentic Christians live out authentic love, okay? We talked about how love, authentic love is sincere, authentic love is devoted, authentic love puts others ahead of themselves, all right? That was last week. Tonight, all right, I'm going to be like super, super like just transparent with y'all. Um, I get really passionate about some of the stuff that we're going to talk about tonight. Um, so here's my ask, okay? Uh, my ask is for you guys to do your very best to silence some of the distractions in your life, silence some of the distractions in your head, silence some of the distractions in this room, okay? And really just kind of lock in and engage. Not because I feel like I have something magical to share with you. What I share with you guys is nothing, it's not because of who I am or what, like what I'm saying, it's, it's the content and it's uh, who Jesus is and, that, and how important that is, okay? So with that being said, listen, I just wanna ask the question, okay, what comes into your mind? What's the first thing that comes into your mind when you think of food? The first thing, I heard it, pizza, okay? Huh? Honeycombs. Honeycombs, yes. Okay, first thing that comes into your mind? Chipotle. Chipotle? Sushi. Great. Chipotle. You want those sweet tart robes. You want the sweet tart robes, yes. All the food in the world. Okay, second one, second thing, second thing. What comes into your mind when you think about school? Homework. Lame, homework, okay. Pain? What else? What? 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 I can't hear you, dude. <laughs> You're like, can't hear you. What are you saying? <laughs> Early mornings, yes. Because you're homeschooled. You just homeschool at home. Okay, uh, next one, next one. Uh, when you guys think about, when you guys think about the world, okay? When you think about the world, just what's going on in the world, the schools that you guys are in, just kind of what you guys are ex existing in right now. What's the first thing that comes to mind? What's the first thing that comes to mind when you think about the world that you live in right now? Everything's big, right? Yeah, everything's big. Huh? Division. Yeah, division. What else? Hey. What you got? Math test. Math test, yes. I hate right. math test. I hate math tests too, yes. They're the worst. Okay, all right. Okay, last one, last one. All right, lock in here, lock in. All right, hey, what, what comes to mind? What's the first thing that pops into your brain when you think about God? When you think about Jesus, what's the first thing? It's crazy. Crazy. Yes. What do you got? Abby? Love and forgiveness. Love it. What do you got, Jayla? Hope. Hope. What do you got, Em? Uh, like something that knows more about you than anything on this planet. Like yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Nobody, you got your hand up? That he like created everything from everything and then like there was nothing and now there's everything. Crazy, right? Like, you can't comprehend nothing. Can't be done. Okay? What do you got? Jesus specifically being yeah. dying on the cross. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Cage. Purpose. Perfect? Purpose. Purpose. Love it. Okay. Hey, so here's why I asked that question. All right? So one of the things that I've been thinking about, one of the things that I've been praying about, one of the things that I've just been working through in my own life, my own reading, my own studying, is... What comes into our mind when we think about God? It's one of those things that I've been just trying to think through and wrestle through. And, and I stumbled across one of my, one of my favorite uh, authors, theologians, and I've been kind of reading through his book again. It's a book called The Knowledge of the Holy. It's, a, it's by a guy named A.W. Tozer, okay, a guy who's homies with uh, C.S. Lewis. C.S. Lewis is the guy who wrote the Chronicles of Narnia. Okay, he wrote a bunch of other books that are based that are pretty incredible for Christianity. Um, and so here's what A.W. Tozer says. Okay, um, he says this. He says what comes into our minds when we think about God is the most important thing about us. What comes into our mind when we think about God is the most important thing about us. He actually opens his book by asking this question. And so when we think about God, 
I, I just, I have to wonder, like, do we think about a God who is gracious? Do we think about a God who is merciful? Do we think about a God who is powerful, a God who is loving? Uh, I think maybe some of us do, but I also think that there's probably a side of you guys. There are some of you guys that are sitting here tonight that are like, okay, when I think about God, when I think about Jesus, I actually think about maybe kind of a, a judgmental God or a God that's just sitting up in heaven waiting for me to screw up or waiting for me to punish me for doing something wrong. And, and I think that both of those things are uh, things that could be based upon, okay, churches that you grew up in, the homes that you grow up in, like your image of God is shaped by a lot of different things. But because who we think uh, God to be, who we think Jesus to be, who we think both of those people to be actually impacts our relationship with him, right? I think who I think Jesus is impacts my relationship with him, and I think in turn it affects the way that we live our life, okay? <laughs> who I think God to be, who I think Jesus to be affects my relationship with him. And what you may or may not know is that over time, the Western world, okay, us, we live in the Western part of the world, okay, it's obviously kind of referred to the West, okay? Guys, as, as technology has advanced, as humanity and our communities, all those things, as those things have advanced, as you guys have advanced in the things that you're involved with, we have been kind of historically, I'm not talking about you guys, I'm saying this is what you've been born into and just kind of raised in, like, we have been more and more, as time has gone on, disengaged with Jesus, God, and the church. We ask ourselves the question, why? Well, here's the reason why. We have had so much at our fingertips. You guys have so much at our fingertips that we have actually started to edge God out of our lives. Because we've started to ha not have time for it. Like, I don't have time for it. Like, I got, I, got, I got this, I got that, I got to be here, I got to be there, I got to do this. And then when I finally have free time, you hop on your phone and you're like, okay, well, three hours have gone past and, like, I've been on TikTok and, like, that's great. It's funny. You learn things. Recipes are amazing on TikTok, right? Like, that's great, okay? But now all of a sudden it's midnight. It's time to go to bed, okay? Where did the day go? We've had more and more reasons uh, to edge God out. There's just been more to do. And so our generation, listen, guys, we're at a crossroads. Okay, you guys are at a crossroads right now. We have to ask a question, and the question is simply this. Hey, what do I do with this guy, Jesus? What do I do with him? Right? The answer to that question actually depends on who and what you think about when you think about Jesus. It's as simple as this. All right? And my question for us tonight as we start, as we jump in, my question for you guys is this. Hey, do you know Jesus? Do you know him? Do you really know him? Do you feel that following Jesus, hey, listen, I get it, but do you feel like following Jesus is important? There's a, lot, there's a lot of studies, there's a lot of statistics out there that say that your generation is actually looking at Jesus and saying, he's just not relevant anymore. Say, so you have to answer the question, do I feel like following Jesus is important? Do we feel that Jesus really is who he says he is? And if he is, then is he worthy of my time? Is he worthy of my worship? Here's what I know to be true, guys. The most authentic Christians that I have ever met in my life have a deep, deep knowledge of who Jesus is, of who he is. And because of this, they have a deep understanding of who they are. So tonight, here's what we're going to talk about, and this is what we're going to wrestle with, okay? Authentic Christians know who they are, but more importantly, they know whose they are. Okay? Authentic Christians know who they are, but more importantly, they know whose they are. And so here's what we're going to do. We're just going to dive straight in, okay? To fully understand who you are, to have an understanding of who you are, not as the person that plays basketball, the person that plays baseball, the person that goes to this school, as to understand who you are as a human being on this planet, we have to first gain an understanding of whose we are. And what I mean by that is we have to first take a look. Okay, who is Jesus? 
okay? When we come into the church, we talk about Jesus a lot, right? We see the cross. We see the images of Jesus. We've seen this all before. We've seen, you know, hot white Jesus, and we've seen completely Middle Eastern Jesus. You guys have all these different visions and images of who Jesus is, but we have to understand who he was. And so Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus Christ, the Alpha, the Omega, the Lion in the Land, the Good Shepherd, the Son of Man, the Son of God, the Prince of Peace, the Light of the World, Emmanuel, the Savior, he is the Savior of the world. He's the one who came from heaven to be God in flesh, to take on the sins of the world so that you and I might be reconciled back to God so that one day we can be reunited with him in heaven as it was originally intended at the time of creation, right? So here's where we go, okay? Colossians 1, 15 through 20. Here's what it says, okay? It says, the Son is the image of the invisible God. The Son is the image of the invisible God. You guys want to know what God looks like? Jesus is him in flesh, okay? That's what he's saying. The Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all earth, visible and invisible. Whether thrones or powers or rulers or authority, all things, not some things, not most things, all things. Things have been created through him, and catch this, and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning of the firstborn. Did that work? He's the beginning of the firstborn from among the dead so that in everything he might have the supremacy. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. Hey, that's a lot. Understand this. That's the gospel. Okay? Understand that when we talk about the gospel, we understand what Jesus was, who he was, and what he intended to do on the earth. This is a picture of the gospel. God, Jesus, put on flesh, came down to the earth, went to the cross, took on the sins of all of us, and died so that each and every one of us could have a relationship with God. Okay? This is the man who died on the cross for each and every one of us and then defeated death three days later. Okay? The man for whom we have count. Listen, this is incredible. Jesus is the man for whom we have countless historical evidences. Listen, we have more historical evidence that supports Jesus, his life, and his claims for who he is and what he did. We have more of that than we do that proves the writings of Shakespeare, the writings of Alexander, and the existence of Alexander the Great. Plato, Aristotle, we have more historical evidence that supports the life and the personhood of Jesus than the people that are in every single one of your textbooks that your schools are saying. This is a fact. Okay? This man is a real man. He is who he said he is. And each and every one of us, listen, whether you believe in Jesus or not, there will be a day where you have to answer the question, what do I believe Jesus was, who he was? You're going to have to answer that question. You have to answer, okay, do I believe he's just another good guy? Do I believe he's just a good philosopher? Do I, have to, uh, do I believe that he's just a good feel-good story that's like this really cool rah-rah thing, like I can get behind that? Or is this book just a compilation of good life lessons? Like, hey... Things in the Bible, they're pretty cool. I'm going to take them and I'm going to apply them to my life, but I don't necessarily believe. You, you have to answer these questions. You have to answer, do I believe that this man is actually God? And if he is, then what now? If I believe that Jesus is who he says he is, the claims that he made are true for my life, I have to answer the question, what now? C.S. Lewis says Jesus was either a lord, a liar, or a lunatic. Okay? If he's a liar, he died for nothing. He died a, a horrific death for a lie. Why would you do that? If he's a lunatic, he's just a crazy guy, why would so many people follow a crazy man? Why would a man like Peter be crucified upside down to follow a liar? Or he is who he says he is, and he is Lord. So we have to answer, answer this question. If we answer that question by saying, you know what? I, listen, I believe that Jesus is who he says he is. I believe that he is the son of God. I believe he's the savior. I want to commit my life to you. Then here's the good news. Let me tell you about who you are now. Okay? Here's who you are when you decide to follow Jesus. Romans 8, 14 through 17. I'm going to fly through this, but here's what it says. For those who are led by the spirit of God are the children of God. 
For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. The Spirit you receive does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the Spirit you receive brought about your adoption to sonship and I would even say daughtership, right? If I can make up a word. And by Him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit Himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now, if we are children, then we are heirs, right? If you're the child of a king, you're the heir to the throne, right? So we are heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ, if indeed we share in his sufferings, in order that we also may share in his glory. Let me give you one more in case you don't believe me. Okay, 1 John 3, 1 through 3, here's what it says. See what great love the Father has lavished on them, on us, that we should be called children of God. This is not a joke. This is not just some feel-good story. This is the king of the universe saying, you are my child now. The reason the world does not know us is that, he did not know they, that it did not know him. Dear friends, now that we are children of God, and, that, and what will be has not yet been made known, but we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Catch this. This applies to you. All who have this hope... Jayla said it earlier, hope, okay? All who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. So following Jesus, listen, following Jesus, recognizing who he is and responding to it with your heart, responding to it with loyalty, what it does is it means is that you, each and every one of you in this room, when you look at Jesus and you say, yes, I'm going to follow you, okay? You are now adopted into the family of God. You right here are now a son and daughter of the most high king of the universe. And I got to ask you something, okay? When you hear that, does it actually resonate? Does it settle in? When I ask you a question, hey, what do you think of when I ask you about yourself? What do you think about? Y'all, some of you guys are not kind to, each, to yourself, right? If I ask you, okay, what do you think of when you think about yourself? Some of you, your first bet is, dude, I am not this. I'm not strong enough. I'm not fast enough. I'm not smart enough. I'm not pretty enough. I'm not good enough. My dad is this. My mom thinks that. You guys immediately go to the negative. But my, my question for you is, is there or is there a possibility that when you follow Jesus, is there a potential that instead of going to the negative, is there a chance that now understanding that you are a child of God, that when I ask you, what do you think about when you think about yourself? Could that first thought be, man, I'm a child of God, and that's the only thing that matters. That's the first thing that should come to your mind. And listen, guys, I get it. I'm hard on myself, okay? I told you guys last week, I told you on Sunday, sp spilled a bunch of green paint on my brand new white carpet, okay? First thing that came into mind, I'm an idiot. I'm not good enough. I always screw things up. Every time I do something, I screw something up. The first thing that did not that came to my mind was not, hey man, it's okay. Like God's got you. All right. My challenge for you is, hey, can we get to a place where we understand who we are in Jesus that when things go bad, when life gets hard, that we immediately go to, hey, I'm a child of God. I'm okay. Things are gonna be all right. I get it. But knowing that you are a son and a daughter of the most high king gives you some confidence, right? Listen, guys, think about this. If you are the son and the daughter of a king, that gives you a little bit of confidence, does it not? That if someone wrongs you, you could say, do you know who my dad is? Like, think again, bro. Okay? It gives you some confidence. It gives you a little bit of swagger. But what it does is it gives you the ability, listen, to not sweat the small things. You got an F on a test, you'll be fine. God's got you. Okay? I'm serious. You'll be fine. Okay? You make a mistake with a boy or a girl and you embarrass yourself in front of all your friends, you'll be fine. You're going to be okay. You've got a Savior who loves you. Right? But more importantly, you have a Savior that loves you for you. Knowing that your salvation is safe with Jesus, guys, and knowing that his spirit is in you and active and moving, it gives you courage to do difficult things. It gives you the courage to ask difficult questions. And guess what? It gives you the ability to hear tough answers, to put yourself out there, to tell people about the life change that you've experienced. And knowing that Jesus has given you a purpose on this earth, listen, the purpose on this earth that he has given you takes pressure off of you to feel like you've got to have it all figured out right now. Right? Seniors in high school. Y'all, you have this pressure. I need to have life figured out. What am I doing next? What am I running after? Guess what? Understanding that there is a greater purpose on your life helps you understand that you got some time. 
Knowing who you are and knowing whose you are will help you understand what you're here for, okay? Check this out, this is cool, all right? Hey, Matthew 28, 18 through 20. Some of you guys know this, okay? It's called the Great Commission. Listen, this is the last thing that Jesus says before he ascends into heaven in Acts, okay? He says this, then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Listen, therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always to the end of the age. Okay? Listen, y'all, if you're concerned about what you're meant to do with on this earth, listen, I get it. But if you're stuck between trying to decide if you want to be a mechanic or a brain surgeon, guess what? It honestly doesn't matter that much. Okay? It honestly doesn't matter that much. Let me tell you something, guys. I've changed my career like five times. Okay? Between my major and my career, I have changed it five times. I've been a youth pastor. I've been a, 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 a content manager. I've been a, a contractor, okay? I've been all kinds of different things, and guess what? My purpose has never changed. My job has changed, but my purpose has never changed. You have to understand that it does not matter vocationally what you are doing or who is writing your paychecks. That's not your purpose, okay? That's not your purpose. Being a dentist, not your purpose. Being uh, whatever, not your purpose. That's your job. And we can't get that twisted, all right? Listen, your purpose here on this earth, as long as you are here, with the years that you have been blessed with, your purpose here is to build a relationship with Jesus, to learn who you are in him, right? To learn who you are in him. And when you are able to do that, you go and you tell people. You go and invite people into it, right? You share about it. Now, how you do that, right, how you actually go out and you share that, what you do as a vocation, what you do as a profession matters, right? Because when you're a dentist, you walk into the dentistry, those are the people that you have influence over. When you're a professional basketball player, you walk into the locker room, those are the people you have influence over, okay? But that's your job, and your purpose is to walk into that vocation and represent Jesus, right? What you do vocationally, look, guys, it's important, but it's not the thing. But how you impact others as you go. Matthew 28, he says, go and make disciples. Most important word there is go. That means get moving. Move your feet. Go and do something. Okay? Don't stay stagnant. Who are you becoming? That's a question I want to ask you guys. Who are you becoming? Right? Who are you becoming more like? What are you becoming more like? One year from now, who do you want to be? Five years from now, who do you want to be? Ten years from now, who do you want to be? What do you want to be true of you? And let me ask you, are you taking the steps right now to be that person? Okay? Are you taking the steps right now to be the person you want to be in 10 years? How much are you loving others? How much are you loving others? Jesus cares about that more than how much you're making. Right? The love that you're giving out is more important than the money that you're taking in. How are we doing? Are we investing in him? Are we investing in his teaching? Right? People that care about investments. Y'all, he wants your heart. He doesn't want your business portfolio. Okay? Listen, guys. Hey, following Jesus is the most important thing you're ever going to do. Okay? It's the most important thing you're ever going to do. I cannot stress that enough. Adults in the room will echo that. Okay? It is the most important thing that you will ever do. And choosing to follow Jesus is going to be the most important thing that you choose to do. Listen, guys. Following Jesus is more important than your GPA. Okay? Following Jesus is more important than the college that you choose. Following Jesus is more important than the person that you marry. Yes, it's more important. Okay? Following Jesus, more important than the career that you choose. Following Jesus impacts every single facet of your life. When you choose to follow Jesus, he gains access to everything in your life and who he is and the teachings that he gives, the example that he lived out when he was here on earth and the scriptures that are left for us, that tells us how we live our life. Y'all, I am not here without Jesus. I am not in a healthy marriage without Jesus. I am not the father of two beautiful boys without Jesus. I'm not a student pastor without Jesus. 
Okay, I'm not alive without Jesus. Y'all, there have been days where I have looked at the world and I've said, I am done. There's no point for me to be here anymore. I'd be better off gone. But because of Jesus and who he is and the grace that he has shown me and the life that he has given me, I'm here. Following Jesus is the most important thing that you will ever do. So here's what I want to encourage you guys. Hey, I'll end with this. Choose to walk with the Savior and the King of the universe. Okay? Actively choose that every single day when you wake up. I am going to walk with the Savior and the King of the universe today. No matter what happens today, I know that I'm walking with him. Choose to walk with your head held high. Okay? Walk into your school tomorrow confident because you know that you are a child of the Most High God. You, by name. Jesus knows you. Jesus cares about you. Jesus is actively working in your life. He wants you to draw near to him and to walk into confidence because you know that you're a child of God. Choose to walk in your authentic purpose, okay? Your authentic pur purpose is to go. Go and represent Jesus, okay? That's your authentic purpose. Listen, guys, if you want to make that decision, you want to follow Jesus, y'all, we're doing baptisms on the 3rd. Let, let's get you baptized. Like, seriously, let me dunk you. It's the best thing ever. I would love to do that for you, okay? But listen, when you make that decision to follow Jesus, it will be difficult. And statistically, it is a lot more common for people to experience hardship and to walk away from Jesus than to persevere through it and find out the life that Jesus has for you when you decide to stick with him. So my encouragement for you, this decision to follow Jesus, guys, to authentically follow Jesus, to authentically know who you are in Jesus will give you a life that truly you would never be able to imagine. And it will knock your socks off, I promise you. Okay? Let me pray for you guys. All right. Lord God, um, listen, I look across uh, these faces, Father, and I just see, I see world changers. I see people that are going to be incredible fathers and mothers. I see people that, God, are going to impact the world in so many incredible ways. And, Father, I just pray that they take you along with them. Um, Father, that they understand that following Jesus is not just a feel-good thing. It's not just something that we put on our Instagram bio. It's not something that we just show up to, to church and, and just do Christmas and Easter and just say, okay, I'm good. I got my God fixed. But, Father, this is a daily decision to follow you, to, to, to engage with you, to have a relationship with you. And, Father, knowing what I know, that, God, you have good plans for every single one of these students. Father, that they are valued, that they have purpose on this earth. Um, Father, no matter where you call them to, um, Father, that, they, that you're with them. Father, would you give them confidence? Uh, would you give them uh, the ability to, to just have some peace tonight knowing, Father, that they are, um, man, they are safe with you. I pray that they know that. Lord, I love you. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen.